Hey guys, Matt here at Tell Happy TV, and in today's video, I'm gonna do a quick breakdown of the three Costco indoor cycling bikes that are all Peloton alternatives for a fraction of the cost. So first of all, I just wanna let you know, I do have links below this video to a full review of each of these three bikes. So I have personally purchased all three of these bikes and spent some time with them and reviewed them and compared them to other bikes like the Peloton Bike Plus, and more. So if you've been looking at one of these three indoor cycling bikes from Costco, you're probably maybe interested in a Peloton bike or Peloton bike plus, but you just don't wanna spend like 2000 or $2,500 on an indoor cycling bike, especially if you don't even know if you're really gonna be that into it, right? So the good news is Costco does have these three options and they're all priced well below a Peloton. The Echelon EX4S is about $1,000. Sometimes some of these bikes go on sale, so don't take all the pricing I say here um, exactly as how I say it because they do kind of change sometimes, you know, depending if they're on sale. But yeah, the Echelon EX4S is about $1,000. And then you have the Inspire IC 1.5, which I have right back here. And that one's like $550, or it can be like as low as $450, depending on if it's on sale. Additionally, the Proform Tour de France CBC from Costco is $385. So let's dive in and take a look at some of the similarities between these three bikes and then we'll look at the differences and then I'll leave you with my final thoughts on which is the right bike for you. So right off the bat, one of the big things all three of these bikes have in common is they come with one year of a free subscription when you buy the bike from Costco. So depending on the platform, this fee can range quite a bit. So for example, the Peloton Bike Plus, if you buy a Peloton Bike Plus, which I have back there, uh, you need to sign up and pay for a $39 per month fee to join their platform. So on top of the $2,500 for the Peloton Bike Plus, you also pay that recurring $39 per month fee. So these other bikes like the Echelon and the Inspire and the Proform, they all have their own platforms and their fees vary. But when you buy from Costco, you get one year for free up front. But then after that one year is up, you need to kind of decide what you're gonna do, and I'll talk more about this later in the video. So if you want to join one of these platforms and get that free membership for a year, these three Costco bikes do offer a really good value in that regard. However, if you're not interested in signing up for these platforms and you wanna use Peloton Digital App, um, I'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. So another big thing these three bikes all have in common is they are magnetic resistant. So two of them are digital magnetic resistant. So the Echelon EX4S and the Proform Tour de France CBC are both digital magnetic resistance, while the Inspire IC 1.5 is a physical magnetic resistance knob. And what I mean by that is on the Inspire, you literally just turn the knob and it physically moves the magnets closer and further away from the flywheel. On the other hand, the digital magnetic bikes like the Echelon, this is the Echelon EX7S actually behind me, but it shares a lot of the same uh, components as the EX4S, so we can kind of use it as a model in this video. The resistance works the same way on the Echelon EX7S as the Echelon EX4S, where you turn that knob and it sends a digital signal to a motor that moves that uh, magnet stack closer and further away from the flywheel. The same exact thing happens with the Proform Tour de France. It has that auto adjusting resistance though on the Proform Tour de France CBC. So when you press those buttons up on the dashboard, it moves the magnets closer and further away from the flywheel. And also the big difference with the Proform is um, it has that auto adjusting resistance with the iFit platform. So I had to talk with the folks over at Echelon and they do not have automatic adjusting resistance at the time of this recording. Technically, it would be possible to have automatic adjusting resistance since it is digital magnetic resistance on the Echelon EX4S and EX7S. However, it is simply just not implemented. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there are all kind of patent wars and uh, legality issues going on in the whole indoor cycling space. And I think that that is probably why Echelon is not implementing that feature right now. However, it might be coming in the future. I don't know for sure. Okay, so all three of these bikes are magnetic resistance and also they are all belt driven bikes. So none of them use a old school chain. They all use belts. And really what it means to have magnetic resistance and a belt driven drivetrain is you get a smooth feeling drivetrain. And I can tell you firsthand after spending quite a bit of time with all three of these bikes that they all do have 
good feeling drivetrains and they do feel smooth to ride. So let's take a moment to talk about the specs of the flywheel here. So the Echelon EX4S has a 28.7 pound flywheel. The Inspire IC 1.5 has a 31 pound flywheel and the Proform Total Front CBC has a 22 pound flywheel. So as I've learned reviewing tons of indoor cycling bikes over the past handful of months or so, flywheel mass is not really the end all be all in terms of, you know, max resistance and what that resistance feels like to ride the bike. So comparing the drivetrain feel of these three bikes head to head, I definitely put the Echelon EX4S at the top of the list because it has a really smooth feeling drivetrain feel and it also has a really good maximum resistance. Even though the Inspire IC 1.5 has a greater flywheel mass, the maximum resistance still is just not as good as the Echelon EX4S. Also, the Echelon EX4S just feels better to ride than the Inspire. And from what I could find, the flywheel mass on the Proform Tour de France is only 22 pounds, but honestly, the flywheel feel, the drivetrain feel on the Proform is actually pretty good, and I'd probably rank it like right around the same drivetrain feel as the Inspire. And while the Proform does have a pretty smooth feeling drivetrain to ride, the maximum resistance out of the box on the Proform Tour de France is really just not very good at all whatsoever. I actually made a separate video on how to modify the maximum resistance, um, but after modifying the maximum resistance on the Proform, which was kind of difficult and probably throws off the metrics, um, it was still it was pretty good after that. Anyway, to make a long story short, I definitely rank the Echelon EX4S at the top of the list in terms of drivetrain feel and maximum resistance, and then Proform down at the bottom of the list with the Inspire IC 1.5 kind of falling in the middle between the two. And that just so happens to line up really perfectly with their price points, you know, Echelon being the most expensive and Proform being the least expensive. So talking about the price, let's talk about some of the other big features on these bikes. So obviously probably one of the first things you're gonna notice on the Echelon EX4S, it comes with a 10 inch screen up front and also the flywheel is on the rear of the bike. So in terms of the flywheel location on the bike, I don't believe this has any influence on how it feels to ride the bike whatsoever. However, what it does influence is the uh, sweat drip zone in front of you. So, you know, like on a Peloton bike or any bike that has the flywheel on the front of the bike, you kind of are placing that flywheel into the sweat drip zone and it kind of like potentially puts your bike at risk to get corrosion from sweat down in the drivetrain. Having the flywheel on the back of the bike kind of just removes the flywheel from the equation of the sweat drip zone and kind of just protects it a little better. Another thing that some bikes do is they actually enclose the flywheel in a housing and we'll talk more about that later. So there are actually a lot of pros and cons to each one of these bikes and like I said I do have a full review and a lot of comparison videos if you want more in-depth information on uh, any of these bikes but in this video I'm really just gonna try and touch on the big things that really stick out to me. So really the Proform Tour de France is the least expensive of these three bikes. And uh, you know, I really do feel like it is the least good option of the three. However, one area the Proform Tour de France really shines is it has the iFit app, and that is really good for like outdoor instructor-led scenic rides. So if you like outdoor instructor-led scenic rides, you might really be interested in the iFit platform, and the Proform could be a really good way to kind of get your foot in the door at a low expense to try out iFit and try out indoor cycling for a year and see if you like it. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Nordic Trek S22i, which is a $2,000 indoor cycling bike that I also reviewed, which I'll put a card to it up here and a link below. Um, the Nordic Trek S22i is the big brother to the Proform bike. The S22i has all the bells and whistles, and it's a really cool bike, and it also uses iFit. So if you're looking at these three Costco indoor cycling bikes as a Peloton alternative at a lower price, and you're also kind of looking into the future where you want to take your indoor cycling hobby, the Proform Tour de France might be a really good option for you if you like those outdoor instructor-led classes, and you're thinking about maybe one day upgrading to a more high-end bike, like some of the more high-end Proform bikes, that come with a big screen on them, or the Nordic Track S22i, which is currently the flagship iFit bike. So with the Proform, you do get that automatic adjusting resistance. However, one downside to it is it doesn't really work as well on this Costco Proform bike as it does the Nordic Track S22i. And what I mean by that is basically the software isn't really quite optimized fully on the Proform bike as in comparison to the flagship $2,000 
Nordic Trek S22i. Another thing that makes the Proform very unique is it does not have a traditional resistance knob. Instead, you have to press those buttons up by the screen or add your own tablet to connect up with the iFit app and then adjust the resistance or use the automatic adjusting resistance. So this really kind of hurts you a lot if you wanna use this bike with a different platform like Peloton Digital App or Apple Fitness Plus, you know, after one year down the road, after your free year expires. And the reason this is a big deal is because those push buttons up on the dashboard will be in the way of where you put your tablet up there on the tablet holder. Now this is all fine and dandy if you wanna use the iFit app forever and renew after that one year is up and keep using it. However, it really kinda of dials you into being locked into just the iFit platform on this Proform bike. Also, like I mentioned before, the maximum resistance on the Proform bike really is just not very good out of the gate. So for me personally, one of the big downsides to the Proform bike was the riding geometry for a taller person. I'm six foot five and I just really felt like the handlebars did not come up high enough on the Proform bike for me to ride that bike comfortably. So if you're really tall, uh, you might find yourself kind of like hunched down and in an aggressive aerodynamic riding position. However, being in that aerodynamic aggressive riding pos position will help you put down more power to the pedals better and better prepare you for like outdoor riding. Also, the Proform does not have the ability to move the handlebars forwards and backwards. So a lot of people at a lot of different heights really kind of find the Proform challenging to fit on comfortably. So if you're at a Costco, I'd encourage you to get on the Proform if there is a display model to see if you're comfortable on the bike. So let's talk about the Echelon EX4S a little bit now. So that bike comes with the 10 inch screen up front. So you do not bring your own tablet on the Echelon bike. One big benefit of this is if you wanna do the instructor led classes, then you don't have to worry about charging your tablet and bringing it and putting it up there and loading up the app and doing all that stuff on your own. It's all integrated into one nice machine. Now for me, kind of one of the downsides to that 10 inch screen is it is a 10 inch screen. And you know, maybe I'm spoiled by the Echelon EX7S here, for example. Also like the Peloton Bike Plus here also has a massive screen up front. And you know, after riding on a bike that has a big screen on it, it's really just hard for me to go and look at a little 10 inch screen. And you know, it's, it's just a total different experience looking at a bigger screen versus a small screen. The 10 inch screen on the Echelon EX4S is just not nearly as immersive as an experience as the Echelon EX7S or the Echelon EX5S, which both come with much bigger screens. So if you're dead set on one of these three Costco bikes and you're looking for the best maximum resistance and best drivetrain feel, the Echelon EX4S wins in that category for sure. However, I did make a complete separate video on seven things I hate about the Echelon EX7S. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out in a card up here or down in the description box. And just like the other three bikes we're talking about here, you do get one year of Echelon membership for free when you buy the EX4S. So the Echelon EX4S as well as the Inspire both have that like V-shaped geometry. So as you lower the seat and lower the handlebars, everything gets closer together. And also as you raise it, everything gets further apart. I should also mention that all three of these bikes are three-way adjustable, meaning that none of them have the ability to independently move the handlebars forwards and backwards separate from everything else. Some of the higher end bikes like the Echelon EX7S and Echelon EX5 do have the ability to move those handlebars forwards and backwards. So in terms of comfort, the Proform bike, I would have to rank it like lowest in terms of comfort. And then the Echelon EX4S as well as the Inspire IC 1.5 I found both those bikes to be comfortable for me to ride on. So another thing that all three of these bikes have in common that I probably should have mentioned way earlier in this video is they all have the ability to give you important metrics, including your power output measured in watts. So all three of these bikes do give you your power output, your resistance, and your cadence. So like on the Echelon EX4S, you get the screen built into it, and all those metrics are up on the screen for you. On the Inspire IC 1.5, you don't get a screen, but you can download their app for free, like on your smartphone or a tablet, and put that up on the tablet holder and get your metrics that way for free. Same exact thing on the Proform bike, you get that little mini display that'll kind of give you some metrics, but you know, if you want your power output, you have to bring your own tablet or your own phone, download their iFit app, and then you get the metrics up on your screen. So in terms of the classes and what it's like to use these platforms, the biggest thing I can really say is iFit really shines for like outdoor instructor-led classes. And then like Echelon, they have like studio rides where they do have like, you know, instructors and they coach you through your rides and they encourage you and inspire you to push harder through your rides. And also kind of the same thing goes with the Inspire app. 
In terms of the studio rides, if I had to choose between like Inspire versus Echelon versus Proform, I think the Echelon probably does the best job of their instructor-led classes, like their studio classes. Whereas, you know, like I said, the Proform shines for the outdoor instructor-led classes. The Inspire app has a pretty similar style as to what the Echelon app has to offer in terms of studio rides. And like I mentioned, I do have more videos on each of these three bikes. Okay, so now what I wanna do is just kind of summarize my final thoughts and opinions and what I would do if I was in your shoes and I was gonna buy one indoor cycling bike to ride. So in terms of these three Costco bikes, I think the true value lies in that free membership. So if you're planning on doing like the Peloton Digital app or Apple Fitness Plus, or you don't really care about the classes or the app that comes with these bikes, I honestly probably wouldn't choose any of these three bikes. So these bikes are all pretty good, but I do think that there are better options for the money, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. If you're really, really interested in the iFit platform, the Proform is a good way to buy a bike at a low cost and sample it for a year for free. If you're really interested in the Echelon platform, the Echelon EX4S is a good way to get a free year of Echelon and try that out for a year. And the exact same thing goes for the Inspire bike. However, the big thing that you need to take into consideration is if you're buying a bike and it has that membership built in to the bike, you're really paying for that membership, even though it says it's free. So really, I guess what I'm saying here is if you buy a bike that does not have that membership price built into it, you can actually get maybe a better bike for the money. So if you really want a free year of membership with a bike that you buy at a reasonable price, I think that Costco does offer three good options in that regard. However, like I was saying, if you just want a bike and you're planning on using Peloton Digital App or Apple Fitness Plus, you're really just kind of paying extra money for something you're not gonna use with one of these three bikes. So if I were dead set on buying a bike from Costco and I intended on using it for the Peloton Digital App or Apple Fitness Plus, I'd probably have to go with the Inspire IC 1.5 because it has a physical magnetic resistance knob, so you don't have to connect it up with the app for that resistance knob to work. Ultimately, what this does is make the Inspire IC 1.5 the most open platform bike of the bunch. However, like I was just saying, the Inspire IC 1.5 is like a bundle deal, so you get that membership price built in to the bike. And in my opinion, I think that you could spend that same amount of money on a different bike and get more value for your money if you don't care about the membership app. So the Inspire IC 1.5 can be a pretty good DIY Peloton build or an open platform build. However, I'd really encourage you to check out some of my other reviews like the Echelon EX15, for example. So the Echelon EX15 actually costs less money than the Inspire IC 1.5 at retail price. I did make a head-to-head -head comparison of the Inspire IC 1.5 versus the Echelon EX15, and I also have a full review of the Echelon EX15, which costs about 500 bucks. It's a really good bang for the buck, and I'll put a link to it below this video. Additionally, there are other bikes I'd recommend, like the Giroto X2, if a high max resistance, magnetic resistance, DIY Peloton bike is your thing. I have a full review on the Giroto X2 as well, and that is even less money than the Echelon EX15. And also if your budget is a little bit higher and say you don't care about metrics whatsoever, you don't care about your metrics and you just want a really good drivetrain feel, check out my Sunny 1805 review. The Sunny 1805 is a really good bike, but it doesn't give you your metrics like your power output, your resistance, and your cadence. However, I do know a lot of people are really happy with the Sunny 1805, as well as the Echelon EX15 and the Giroto X2. The Sunny 1805 is like 600 bucks, and also if your budget is a little bit higher, the Schwinn IC4 is a great option that a lot of people love. The Schwinn IC4 costs $900, however, it is less expensive than the Echelon EX4S, and I do have a very full and thorough review on that bike. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you a little bit in understanding the differences and maybe which Costco bike you should buy or if you should buy a Costco bike at all. If it has, please give this video a thumbs up. Any questions or comments, leave down below. Be sure to check out my other reviews that I have linked below this video in the description box for those other bikes I mentioned. Thanks for watching, guys. Click subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in my next video.